snowing in the morning. If we only had two inches and it's still snowing, nobody's coming uh, because how much could fall in the time we were here. So um, we checked with the center and were able to back up and get an extra hour on the front end tonight. So we started at 5, and that gave us opportunity to go ahead and do our service for tomorrow morning. Night. And uh, so we're glad we did because that means we get to communicate with you. We get to, we're going to do a, uh, some acoustic worship, and then we're going to um, receive our offering. Then we're going to do tomorrow morning sermon tonight. Okay, and um, and then we're going to let you go home after you help clean up. That's your, you know, in, in school, they, the, the teachers have what they call exit tickets. In other words, you got to do something and give it to the teacher. When you walk out of the room, your exit ticket tonight is cleaning up. <laughs> you got to help us out here. You don't care about your grade, okay. <laughs> wait a second, wait a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The Lord's keeping tally. <laughs> yeah. He, they're, they're doing what the kids do. I don't care about my grade. I don't really care if I get the extra ticket or not. Give me a zero. See if I care. You will next time you're taking this class again. All right. So, no, there's actually what he's doing is, is there's a whole bunch in every crowd. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, y'all want to? If you can stand up where you are, we're gonna stand up. We're gonna sing, and um, Dick and Nathan are doing. Um, you know, we don't have any microphones, or we don't have any. Um, uh, projector. Join in, be a part, and um, we love you. And I'm glad you could be here with us tonight. <laughs> Right, so if you don't know the words, just uh, try to pick up on the patterns. <laughs> try to pick up on the ones you hear repeat a lot and sing those with all your heart, all right? <laughs> all right. How do you explain? How do you describe? The love that goes from east to west Runs as deep as it is wide Thank you. 
again. And I worship you, oh, Prince of Peace. That is what I want to do. I give.
when Jesus was born, it was a holy night. Amen. Amen. The Savior of the world, the Savior of us, the ones that we still, the, the one that we still worship to this day. He came to this earth through the Virgin Mary. Amen. And it was the beginning of a change in everything, even the word. Everything changed when he came to this earth. And just like everything changed in this earth, the way things functioned in this earth, the way things were in this earth, just like they changed when Jesus came to this earth, they, they change in you when they come into your heart. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Stars are brightly shining. It is a night of our dear Savior's birth. Help me out, church. service tonight, kind of a, a condensed version, y'all can be seated, condensed version because the snowstorm's coming in overnight, um, and I think the uh, news station said tonight, wherever you are tonight, Stay where you going to be until Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's looking pretty heavy out there, they, I think they said they've upticked it now to 11 to 17 inches, so, um, you know, praise the Lord, I love snow, and you know, if you can give me a big dunce all at one time, I'm a happy man, you know? Got, got stuff to eat at the house, all ready to go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, those tonight with us that have joined family and come and visited, and our friends come and visit, we're so happy to have you all tonight. We're, uh, we're blessed to have you with us tonight, and hope you've had a good time so far. Um, uh, we uh, kind of walked by the table a little bit later, earlier, and I noticed that the locusts had descended, and uh, the food was gone. And uh, but that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be, when it comes to the food, we're supposed to be like locusts and take it out. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so, praise the Lord. Anyway, um, we're, we're going to receive our offering at the end of the service, but let's go ahead and pick up from last week. And those of you who weren't with us, we'll kind of recap just a little bit. And uh, we're, we're talking about not losing heart. You know, um, the uh, temptation to grow weary, the temptation to want to quit, the temptation to think that the things God placed in your heart um, are not ever going to come to pass Face, we, we face all that. We all, a lot of us face that and sometimes face it more often. And I'll tell you what, a lot of times you face it more and more as you've been longer and longer that you hadn't seen what you thought you were going to see. Okay? And um, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 through 9 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting and let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not and the amplified bible 
Amplified Classic now. The Amplified Classic says, if you don't lose heart. J.B. Phillips says it this way in verse 9, let us, now, let us not grow tired of doing good. For unless we throw in our hand, or a, a boxing term we'd be throwing your towel, the ultimate harvest is assured. Hallelujah. You see, what God has promised you, what God has said to you, what God has decre decreed to you is a promise from Him. And when we lay hold of that by faith and we walk our walk out and continue to be faithful to the things God called us to, even though there could be time frames in there where it doesn't look like it's going to happen. I'm going to tell you something. If you think it's been a little while for you, think about Abraham. Abraham was 75 when God first showed up and began to talk to him about saying to the seashores and the stars of the heavens kind of stuff. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, it was, it was 75. At 99, it still hadn't happened. Now, Abraham got a little frustrated in the middle, decided he was going to help it out because his wife came to him and said, hey, you know, it ain't happening. I got a fix for it. Take Hagar. And Abraham said, no, baby, baby, I can't do that. I just can't do that. I love you. We're together. We're one. You know, just, you know, we got to be, I, I got I to gotta be true to you. And is that what I said? No. Let me just say, can I kind of read between the lines? And Abraham and Hagar went in the tent. Hello? You know, and then we had, we had Ishmael, and we've still got problems. You know, listen, one night in the tent can cause centuries of problems. <laughs> I mean, you think days of problems or years of problems. It calls, it's called millennia of problems, all right? And so listen, you can't get tired. You can't wear out. You can't become frustrated that what you believe God put in your heart, uh, as you, and, and when you became a Christian, you began to serve him, and things began to drop into your spirit. Uh, you can't let that go. You can't get weary. You can't lose heart in the process. Why? Because the ultimate harvest is assured. Amen? Glory to God. And so we, you know, we, um, you know, we read last week from Deuteronomy chapter 30 that God set before us life and death, blessing or cursing, and then he goes, hey, 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 choose life. And, and for, you know, to be a little more modern, hey, stupid, choose life. <laughs> All right? You know, I mean, if you just can't figure this out, life is better than death. Good is better than evil. Amen? He said it before us and then gives us a choice. And so we want to choose life. Can you say amen? We want to choose the good things in life. And we want to choose to be faithful to God. I remember uh, when I first got born again, and um, it was kind of interesting, when I first got born again and baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, glory to God, and, and you know, we're still speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. You know, growing up with a good classical Pentecostal boy, you know, we, we, we kind of, we kind of, and, and that we shouldn't stop reverencing, but we kind of got so reverential about, the, about speaking in tongues, we wouldn't do it. You know, you had to get slapped upside the head by the Holy Ghost, knocked in the floor and shaken, and then you might let a couple more slide out, you know. And we, we, didn't, we didn't understand the blessing of communing with God and, and praying in the Spirit. Hallelujah. But I remember right when I first got saved, I would, I would pray in an oriental tongue uh, a lot. I mean, a lot, you know. And, and, and something kind of dropped into me in, during that time frame that I was going to be going to, to the, uh, somewhere into Asia to, to preach the gospel. Now, it was so strong when it happened, I'm, I got my bags packed. A little bit, a little figurative. But, man, I'm ready to pack the bags, get on the airplane, take off, and God's going to show me where to go once I land. You better know that's what God's going to do. All right? Okay? And anyway, and so, you know, I, I, you know, I, I praise God, I'm going to Oregon, I'm going to preach glory to God, hallelujah, I'm ready to go, I'm going, I'm going, out. I'm going, I'm going overseas, I'm going to, you know. Well, nothing happened. Of course, I don't know. And so, you know, I went along a couple of years, and, and, and the next year, <clears throat> this was 1979, I was born again. 79, I was born again on July the 11th, 1979, at the First Pentecostal Holiness Church, corner of Brinkley Road, Plaza Drive, in Greenville, North Carolina, 27834. Just trying to be a little bit like Dad Hagen here, you know. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember everything else anyway. Uh, anyway, and, and um, four nights later, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues, hallelujah, praise God. And then James slammed my court door by a Fiat Sports Spider, looked me and said, you know, she didn't say you're crazy, but she said, you know how unmasculine he is for a guy to be a Christian and stomped off, and that was never our relationship for three weeks. Okay? And, uh, you know, she was, she was upset with me, and uh, we, kept, we, you know, we just kind of messed things up. And um, 
Actually, that, that happened later. Okay, you know, about two weeks after we got, got saved. Because the next Wednesday night after I got saved, you know, I, that's when she did slam the door and say, you know how masculine this guy for me a Christian. Went in her house crying, and I drove up. I'm going to church, bless God. I'm a man of God now. I'm serving God. <laughs> And, uh, you know, you know Brother Gentry's preaching, you know, and, and I'm, I'm going to say, you know, Wednesday night in the Pentecostal church, we always go down to the altar to pray. You, you, every Wednesday and most Sunday nights, you got to go down there, and all the old saints got to come up there and grab you with the Vulcan pinch <laughs> and hold you there where they pray everything in the world down on you and shake you. and then, I mean, you know. I mean, Miss Rumley got people filled with the Holy Ghost not because they were getting, I mean, in spite, I mean, she had her jaws going on down like this. She loved God. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, and so, we, you know, I found the aisle at the end of the service that night to go down there. Here's Janie walking by. Okay, cool. And she went down and got born again, baptized the Holy Ghost, sang four songs in four different languages, and praised God. Hallelujah. Then we broke up. For about three weeks, you know, listen, when you date, you date two years as heathen, and then you suddenly get saved, it was good for us to kind of just get, get with God, and then, come, and then we got back together. And we've been together ever since. Hallelujah. And um, praise the Lord. But I knew I was supposed to go, I was going to be going to preach in the Orient at some point in time. Well, that next year, that year, I was going to be going to our Pentecostal Holiness Bible School, you know. I'm going down to Holmes College of the Bible in Greenwood, South Carolina. And, you know, some guy walks up to me. And hands me this little brochure on Rhema Bible training and says, if I was going to go to Bible school anywhere, this is where I'd go. I looked at it, looked at the price, and said, <laughs> I didn't know anything about faith. I knew I, was, I knew I was saved. I knew I was born again as the Holy Ghost. Amen? You know? Now, of course, our Pentecostal testimony means like this. Thank the Lord, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Pray for me that I hold true to the end. And I messed it all up. You know how we young people get sometimes. I said, I want to thank the Lord that I'm born again, baptized the Holy Ghost, and I'm holding, and I'm going on with Jesus all the way to the end. You might want to join me. And that, I mean, we almost had a falling out in the church, you know. <laughs> Pray the Lord. But I, I knew that I kept praying, you know, and, and then but ended up ended up going to Rama. You know, that's a whole nother line of stories, okay? Ended up at Rama Bible Training Center in the, in the uh, uh, fall of 1980 and graduated in the spring of 1981, came back to Greenville, got married to Janie. And, you know, we're, we're going to a Word of Faith church there in town, and we're serving there. And this, this, kind of, this thing about the Orient just kind of starts dropping as I'm getting and working at ministry and working in the church and serving and, you know, and, and, and getting a hold of all this stuff in ministry and about serving God. Uh, this is about losing, not losing heart, folks. I'm, I'm making a point here. There's a story here. I had some real wise person told us uh, a few, couple of years ago that, you know, uh, we're old now to stop telling Dad Hagen stories and start telling our own. <laughs> We've got some stories ourselves, you know. I thought that was, that was good wisdom. Hallelujah. And, and anyway, um, so ministry's coming, you know, doing things and working, and our church is associated with Buddy Harrison, and, you know, my actions from Raymond began to kind of wane. Uh, still love Brother Hagin, still love the ministry, but I was getting connected with FCF and Brother Buddy and that kind of thing, and uh, just getting connected, you know, there. And listen, Buddy, Buddy Harrison is one of the most uh, uh, Awesome man that ever ministered in my life. I, I love a buddy. He's in heaven. Still alone because he's still alive. He's in heaven. And, uh, but he, put a, he put, invested a lot in my life and put a lot into me and, and shared with me and, and helped me get through some tough places. And, um, you know, we go, so we're going along. I'm in prayer one night, and the Lord said, go back to your roots. Yeah. And I wasn't a scientist, but I, I knew what that meant. You know, you've left, you've left, dad, see, dad's your spiritual father. So you need to get back connected to Rhema. You know, right now, FC, FCF has been good to us and been a blessing. You know, we, still, we still love Pat when we get to see her. We just, it's just a good time to be around her. Um, but it was go back to your roots. And so I, I made a trip up to Washington, D.C. Brother Hagan was in um, uh, the Washington, old Washington a basketball arena downtown and in, in downtown Washington DC and went and got to see him and, and just and immediately that, that, that was that reconnection of what God sent me there but I had I was beginning to let go but he didn't want me to let it go 
Amen. And so I, I, was, I, was, I obeyed God. And then in 1989, I was ordained with Raymond Ministerial Association and became part, you know, got really, really connected, went back to some camp meetings and started to be connecting to my roots and um, getting, you know, tied back in with, with Brother Hagen and uh, having him minister our life. But this Orient thing still hanging out there. By this time now, it's been uh, almost 10 years since the Lord spoke to me. I knew I would go almost 10 years, and nothing happened. Somewhere in that time frame, 86, 87, our church, we went on a missions trip to the um, Dominican Republic. Our first trip out of the country on a missions trip. I wasn't the lead. I, I got to share a little, few, like five minutes on one night, but we, were, we went down. And uh, it was a great experience. But this thing still kind of weighed down. And, um, and then in the, um, uh, we moved to Greensboro. And during the time we moved to Greensboro in 88, 87, we moved, we moved to Greensboro, and um, we had begun pastoring here. And uh, what, the first year we were here, uh, another pastor in another town called me and said, look, I got this guy named um, Mark Brzee coming in, and, um, he, and we don't have him on Sunday, but we want, he wants to do more than one church. He wants to be in at least another church while he's here. And uh, would you like to have him? I said, we'll take him Monday through Wednesday. Because we heard Brother Hagin talking about him and Doug Jones and the, and, and the, uh, um, the girls that we're going to get married to and all this kind of stuff that they, that they did get married. And um, that, that's a whole other story uh, for them to tell one day. Uh, yeah. And um, so Mark came in, and we, we, you know, over the next three or four years, he was here five or six times. We developed a really good relationship. And I was at a um, camp meeting in 1991, 1991 camp meeting in Tulsa. And... Um, Looking around the auditorium, there's Mark up there in the, in the stands, and I look over and I see him. And you know how you can see somebody a long ways off in a big auditorium, and you, and you, you know, we got ten thousand people running around the place. You just don't go, you can't go grab people. So just waved, and then that was kind of it. And when I turned back, kind of turned back around, and sat. The Lord said, "You'll travel in Europe with him." And I went, yeah, "Right." You know, he's big name, you know, big Rama guy, you know, you know, known he's doing all this cool stuff, traveling all over the world. And I'm like, I'm a little pastor down in, over in Greensboro, North Carolina. Nobody's ever heard of him, you know. You know, the, the, you know, the, you know the, the, the Hagans would say, you know, we, we, we know who you are. We don't know your name. We know who you are, you know, because there's so many people coming through there. But they, I was, the fact that they recognized your face was amazing to me, okay. And, um, but, you know. I turn around, and so next day I'm walking through the Coliseum, and he's, he's standing somewhere, and I, tell, I walk by and just pat him on the shoulder because he's talking to somebody. I'm not going to interrupt him. And he, he greets me and grabs me and says, stop. I need to talk to you. And so I okay. I'm standing over here waiting for him to finish his conversation. And he turns around and begins to talk to me. He says, listen, um, we're starting Bible schools in Europe. He said, um, I, I want you to go and minister in them. And I was like, I did hear from God. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I didn't. I didn't act like that to him. Right. I already knew this, you know. <laughs> no, I didn't do that either. And I actually did say, you know, the Lord just told me yesterday. So I didn't have to pray about it. I didn't have to wonder about it. I didn't have to think about it. Yeah, I'll go. Yeah, got to raise the money to go, but I'll go. And, um, and then in, in February of the next year, I went to Est Tallinn, Estonia, to uh, Fallen, Sweden, and ministered on my first solo missions trip, teaching in Bible schools, teaching Bible school students, hallelujah, um, and, and sharing the word of faith in these countries. Estonia had only been uh, free for two years from communist domination, communist rule at that time. And that began a journey for us in ministering overseas. And um, I, that's not Asia. That's Europe. Western Europe, I mean, we, at that time, Eastern Europe is where I was at, you know. And, um, you know, I mean, we, we went, we did Estonia, we did Sweden, we did Germany, we did Italy, we did France, we did uh, Czech Republic. Um, I'm trying to think of all the Bible schools I did in Europe. Uh, we, did, we did a number of the Bible schools there in Europe and had a wonderful time. Spain, we did Spain. Um, and it was, it was an awesome time of ministry. Um, you know, got to, take the, got to take the family four times with us, and we traveled around Europe and driving and, getting, you know, doing things. But it was just an awesome experience. It was such a rewarding experience to share and to impart 
um, into the lives of the, of, the, of the Bible school students and that kind of stuff. My, my favorite country, you know, I, I love France. I love, you know, but my favorite country is Estonia. I've been there five times. Uh, Ken Cash, we've developed a relationship with Ken Cash over there, and we have a wonderful relationship. I've got to go back, though, folks. I'm just telling you. I have got the itch to get back. And it's been a number of years now since we've been able to go, but I, I've got to go back. All right? I'm leading up to Asia. Just hang with me. Because you can't lose heart. You can't give up on what God's told you. Now, at this time, we're, th- we're 15, 16 years down the road. I am doing all these European Bible schools, and, <clears throat> and then you begin to think, and what happens is may your, man, your man's thoughts come in. The thoughts where man begins to figure it out, like Sarah says, take, my, take Hagar and have a sign by him. See, you think, well, that's it. But well, you begin to think, well, that, that, that itch to missions was, was this. And you began to kind of relegate things that you see in the natural or that have taken place and put them into the word that God gave. And you can't do that. Because that word that God gave is a supernatural word. It's a word that he, believe, he is planning on bringing to pass in your life. And the things that he spoke were not spoken just to fill up air, not just to, to water the plant, I mean to uh, feed the plants with some carbon dioxide. They were given because they're spiritual, they're full of his life and full of his power, and they're given with a direction and a purpose to come to pass. My word will not return to me void, but it will accomplish the thing I sent it to do. Now we know that refers to the written word, but it also refers to spirit, the words he gives you that line up with the word, line up with the plan of God that he speaks to you. It will not return to him Unless you throw in the hand, you throw in the towel, you quit, you lose heart. You can't lose heart. And so we're going along, and I'm going to all these different countries, and, you know, and ministering and having just, it just, just, and I was having the time of my life, but it was spiritual. It was so rewarding to stand there and, and to minister to people who hadn't heard these things. or Well, by the time I got to them, they'd heard them, but they never heard them preach like I preached. Now, you, down in our church, I teach a lot more than I preach. But there, I'm, you know, the Estonians, they thought I was crazy. You know, they had all these teachers come in, and they're stoic. They're, they're, they're like Vikings. And they're, culturally, they're, they're very stoic. They say Americans make faces because we smile. Okay, I'm standing on the tabletops preaching, and they're like, they didn't know what to do. I think some of them are going to run out the back door. That man's crazy. No, I was full of faith in the Holy Ghost. I was a preacher. A preacher of faith came, and it was so rewarding to be there. And we still have relationships with some of those Bible school students we taught. That, I mean, I've been to Esther a few times and, and gone back and gone to their churches and preached in their churches down to their pastors and stuff. What a reward. What a reward to, to know you invested in the life the things God's given you. The deposits that came by the Spirit of, the, of, the, of God and by the Word of God. The things that have been down and placed in you. And God's drawn that out and given it to others and now they're carrying that on and bringing life to other people. What a reward. You can't measure that. You can't put that in monetary terms. You can't put that in any other way except heavenly reward. It's a spiritual reward. And uh, and so I'm you know I'm I'm going still doing these school ministry there and and so forth. And I picked up Mark Brzee's newsletter one year and um, some around ninety oh ninety seven ninety eight somewhere in that time frame. And he's 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 got an article there where he was he was in an airplane he was flying home and they were coming east for some reason they were coming by way of coming through uh, you know, um, uh, Asia to come back to America instead of going west. I forgot the reason they were doing it. Maybe they were stopping off to do something. But I don't know. I don't remember the reason was. But uh, he's, he's looking there, and he's going through there, and he's looking at the world map. And, you know, he, I do it. Every time I get on the airplane, I pick up the world map and look at all the routes of the planes and stuff. You think, you've, never, you've seen that before. I know, but it's just kind of cool to look at it. It's something to do while you're going, You know, that sound of those, those engines rolling for hours and hours and hours and the 5% humidity on the plane, you got to do something. <clears throat> and, he, and the Lord spoke to him and said, the same thing you did in Europe will work in Asia. And I almost jumped out the second floor of my house. I said, that's it. That's it. That's how I'm going to Asia. 
See, God spoke to me in 1979 and said you would go preach there. And so I'm on the phone to the ministry. I'm, I'm lining up for Bangkok because that's the first school they were going to start was in Bangkok, Thailand. I'm, I'm in line. Put, put me down for February. Yeah. Now, let me tell you something. You don't wear your winter clothes when you're going to Bangkok in February. <laughs> I'm just telling you. You know, we left Greensboro, North Carolina. It was, it was freezing and cold. You get to Bangkok, it's you know, like 90 degrees at, at midnight. You step, and and you, we didn't get to walk down. You had to step out on the tarmac, get on the bus, and go up to the terminal. You know, it's 90, I'm muggy, 90 degrees. But I'm, gonna tell, I'm, I'm glad that we didn't go down the little ramp things. Because when I stepped off that airplane and stepped on that ground, a word God had given me 20 years before. 20 years came to pass. 20 years. God is faithful. And boy, we had a good time in Bangkok. Boy, we preached. We preached them happy, you know. Um, it's just, it was just amazing, but... I stood there, and, and, and tears welled up in my eyes. God, you're faithful. God, you're true. You spoke a word to me in, in, in 1979, and, here, and all this stuff has happened. All these things have gone to, you know, come to pass. All these changes in the direction of things I thought I was going to do and things I didn't do and places I did go and things I thought I was going to get to do but I didn't do and all this kind of stuff. And they, these connections you made in the spirit that you didn't have a clue in the beginning of that connection what was going to be happening at the end of it or in the process of having that connection. Now, you know, it's not an end of March relationship, just... I didn't know when we had him come to our church four or five times, six times in those, those five, six-year period there at the beginning before we ever started the Bible schools that that was going to happen. I had no idea when I said yes that Bangkok, Thailand was on the agenda down the road. But God did. God knew what he was doing. There's things happening in your life right now that are divine appointment and divinely designed to get you to a certain place. If you won't quit, you won't throw in the towel, you don't throw up your hands, you don't say, I'm never going to make it, but you just keep pressing in because God is doing things. And things are happening, you have no clue as to why they're happening. I'm not talking about sickness and disease and calamity. I'm talking about you meet this person and that person or you're asked to do this or you're asked to do that. Something's going on and you have no no idea that that is the foundation to the house of the fulfillment of a word from God to you. But you can't quit. You can't throw in the hand. You can't say, I can't take it anymore. As I stood there on that tarmac with my luggage, you know, I carried on some stuff. I, I don't trust airlines. I lost my entire dress clothes, uh, big 55 pounds. I mean, it was, it was, it was huge. Uh, my, my wardrobe that I carried when I traveled and taught in Bible schools, I had all my suits in it and all this kind of stuff. You know, and it, it was, I, was, I was already marked heavy, had the orange tape all over it and all this kind of stuff. Heavy, extra heavy, hand with care, hurt your back, you know, wear a brace. I, I mean, all kinds of stuff they had all over it. And I went to Spain, to Barcelona to preach, and got there. We, we were rove at, we were at 11 o'clock in the morning, and I was preaching at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And I got there, my wife got there, the kids got there, and the luggage didn't. Anybody ever traveled overseas? By the time you fly all night and get over there, you're grubby. Okay? And I had a choice. Don't preach night or preach grubby. I did grubby. I just told the students, I said, look, guys, sorry. This is it. You know, I don't normally preach like this, but you get grubby tonight, baby. It's going to be Holy Ghost Word, but it's going to come out through a grubby vessel. All right? So just look past the, 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 uh, the 24 hour shadow. <clears throat> you know, the, the about 10 hours past due shadow and the, you know, the, 
the, the clothes that, that smell like an airplane and kind of just, you know, whatever, it's all stretched out and you're all whatever, spilled stuff all over you, the kids spit all over you, you know. I didn't come all this way to sit in the hotel room tonight because they lost my luggage. We're coming to preach. So, but see, anyway, I, had my, I, carried, I carried from then on, I was carrying stuff on. Not the big one, I, but I kept some clothes in what I was carrying on that I could change into immediately if I had to. Didn't make the, you make one mistake once, you're going to do it twice, okay? And so uh, I'm standing on that tarmac, and it's it just over, overwhelmed. Two things. I heard from God, and God's faithful. There is something that happens in your heart. There is something that, that is eternal that takes place in you. When you're standing in the fulfillment of what God's spoken, when the realization, yeah, I did hear from God, and God is faithful to what he's promised you. Something happens in you that Satan can't undo. It does something in your spirit that gives you the, the I don't know how to say it in a way, better way than this, kind of a contradictuativeness. The tenacity. You know? The, I won't quit. The, you know, uh, sick them to a bulldog. Dog with a new bone. You know, you just, something takes place in you when you know God speaks to you and that he's faithful to bring to pass what he told you. If you go in the towel, if you don't quit, if you don't lose heart in the process. Now, I'm going to add something to it. I was going to read some other scriptures, but I'm going to add something to this. Because Samson's our example of what happens if you do lose heart. What happens if you do throw in the hand? And, you, and you're paying a price for missing out on what God said. Remember, your hair can grow again. Your beard can grow again. God can restore in you his calling that now he never took away from you, but you walked away from. He can restore that in you. And the Bible says that when Samson got between the pillars of, the, of, of that uh, stadium and he pushed them apart and all the 3,000 Philistines, more Philistines were killed in that one moment than he had killed in his entire life. There's hope. There's hope for you that a baby thought you weren't ever going to be able to get to do it. You kind of quit. You kind of walked away. There's hope for the knowledge that God can cause the end to be greater than anything you've done in between. There's hope to know that God is faithful even when we're not. And if you'll turn back to him and you'll pick up once again the calling, the word. Paul wrote to Timothy, he said, fight a good warfare with the prophecies that went before thee. You take that word. See, this, we're not talking about being healed. We're not talking about getting possessions. We're talking about following after God and fulfilling his purpose for your life. That's another message. It's a good message. God does that. But I'm, I'm talking about when we've let go of callings, when we let go of vision, when we've let go of things that he's spoken to you about your life because it's been too long. Oh, it, could, it couldn't have been God if it took this long. Because see, we get so used to the, you know, uh, I got if it, ain't, if it ain't right now, then I wasn't in faith. If it didn't happen yesterday, I missed it somehow. There are some things God's called you to. Not, not everybody. Not, this doesn't. We're not talking about just ministers. There's callings on everybody's life. Everybody has a purpose in the kingdom. Everybody has a calling in the kingdom. It may not be to stand behind a pulpit and preach the word, but you've got a calling in the kingdom. You are valuable to God. You are precious to God. You are anointed by God. You are called by God. <coughs> to stand in a certain place. And when you maybe look back and say, you know what, I, I kind of quit. kind of threw in the towel. Then I, I want to tell you, go pick it up. 
I'm reminded of the scene in, in Chariots of Fire. Some of y'all are old enough to remember Chariots of Fire. Some of you are don't, and you, you don't have never watched it. Uh, it's, the, it's the running movie about Eric Little and um, Abrams, the, the um, Jewish guy who ran, and how they ran in the Olympics. I forgot, 28 Olympics or 32 Olympics, whichever one it was. 32 because it was Germany, okay? And they, they ran the Olympics. They ran against each other, Christian versus Jew. The, the, the allegory and the parallels there are just, you know, phenomenal. But in, in one of the races, Little is running, and on, he's on the inside of the track, and somebody comes by and, and knocks him into the track, and he rolls over. And he sits there. And it's all slow motion. He's sitting there. It's like it takes forever for him to get back up. But as he gets back up, he begins to run. And he, in the movie, the guy, he just throws his head back, and he just runs with everything he's got. And he passes the He's way behind. And he passes the entire crowd and, uh, of runners up in front of him and runs and breaks the tape and wins. And Abrams is sitting up in the stand watching and crutches his, um, his, his bulletin because he just saw something he'd never seen before. Somebody, you know, somebody defeated, somebody knocked down, somebody in a position of quitting, get up and run again and run like the wind and win the race. I'm telling you tonight that whatever it is, Whatever the thing you think is a calling that you think you're not going to walk in, that you've maybe quit on, maybe that you have walked away from because of this or because of that, because of personal um, insecurities, because you think you don't measure up, because you don't think God can use you in your state, God can fix your state. God can fix the fat past. God can fix the failures. God can fix everything that you got it for an excuse to keep you from running the race. And you could do more in the end than you've ever done before. So I, I, I encourage you now, in closing, run. Get back in the race. If you haven't quit, don't quit. What may look like a, an eternity between the word and the fulfillment is simply a space of time in which God is doing things that have to be done to get you there. He's connecting the dots. Anybody ever, ever, ever have the little things where you connect the dots? And you start drawing the lines that it makes no sense. And you come around, all of a sudden, you the last dot, and you look at it and go, oh, wow. That's something you, you go like, God's connecting the dots in your life as you walk with him. And if you missed it and you went off, he's got an eraser. And he can erase all that mess and put you back on track. And you can finish your course. And you can finish it with joy. And you can see the fulfillment of the things he's placed in your heart. So don't lose heart. Don't throw in the hand. And if you have, get back up and run again. Amen. And you'll see the fulfillment of God's word in your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you for being with us tonight. Those who are joy watching my Facebook, I see a bunch of people I know. God bless. I guess we ought to do this one on Saturday night so you guys can see us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People I went to high school with, people I, I know, other ministers I know, we're, we're glad y'all were able to join us. And, good, and, and uh, I'm glad you got to see me. I can't see you out there, but I'm glad you got to see me. And uh, we, we bless you in the name of Jesus. We thank you know, God's goodness and mercy be on you. May you have a wonderful and blessed and prosperous Christmas. And may the, the, Jesus be the center of everything you do during this season. May your family be blessed and may your new year be prosperous because of the goodness and mercies of God in Jesus' name. Until we meet again, may you remember this. That the Word of God says this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you again next time here at Faith and Victory Church. Yeah.